Thank you very much, Chrissy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure to be here. So, uh, yes, uh, there is one slide that's uh, suddenly a little bit out of date by a matter of hours. <laughs> I'll get to that very shortly. And it's actually this one. Um, the share price, as it was a couple of days ago, was three cents a share, and our market cap was $2.5 million, which I think someone at least told me this is the smallest company that's presenting <laughs> at this conference uh, this week, I believe. Um, and with cash in the bank of just under $2 million now since that was done, uh, our enterprise value is, uh, let's say, very affordable. Uh, however, as Chrissy just mentioned, uh, we did get some news out this morning ahead of the conference or the speech that I'm giving you now. Um, and that share price chart now ends with a, a sort of vertical line that actually shot up to 13 cents this morning on open of trade. So I couldn't really believe it when I got the phone call this morning. But anyway, there it is. So our market cap's a little bit larger than $2.5 million, uh, and I'm rather proud of that, I guess. Uh, it's been two years since we listed the company at 20 cents. So uh, as you may have sort of seen other companies present, the last 12 months in particular has been a real challenge for a lot of companies listed in the junior resource space, uh, and we have not been, uh, we've been part of that uh, challenging period. Uh, and it'd be very nice to think that we might be nearly through it. Um, in terms of uh, shareholders, uh, half the company is owned by directors and management, so we've got a lot of skin in this game, and uh, that's an understatement. We've been, I've been working on this for over four years now as my primary focus. Um, so let me get on and tell you the story that we've got to share. Uh, board of directors, three directors, uh, we've all got great experience in different capacities, and our focus to this point in time has been very much in West Australia, uh, where we're based, of course, in Perth, and our strategy is very simple. It's a combination of projects, purity, and ports. And by that I mean silica is ubiquitous, it's everywhere. However, to get good quality silica sand is actually quite a, a challenge geologically. And then to get good quality silica sand that you can feasibly transport bulk tonnage to a port, and for that port to then have capacity or the ability to take 40, 50 or 60,000 tonne vessels, suddenly uh, high quality silica actually becomes a lot rarer as opposed to just plain old silica sand. Um, so three of our projects are down in the southern part of West Australia and more recently we've done some work and one of the pieces of news is the work we did late last year up near Wyndham um, in the Kimberleys and uh, Wyndham Port in particular uh, is a very interesting situation at the moment. So. Our strategy has been to have multiple projects, which by doing that, we're de-risking the company and de-risking the investment as we move forwards. And of course, as we move forwards, each port has its own specific sort of opportunities. And the silica sand actually in detail, uh, when you look under a microscope and when you start assaying it, the silica sand also has its own little nuances, which are very important from a, a pricing point of view and customer. So the silica sand that we've been focused on our main project, or the first one that we started off with about four years ago, Sparkler, actually sits almost midway between two ports, Albany and Bunbury. Uh, so we've been talking to both ports, uh, Southern Ports Corporation operates them, and Bunbury in particular does present us with some opportunities for export capability. So because of that, then we've spent more money or invested in that, this particular project area. And of course, uh, because of its location, we have the opportunity to truck it either to Bunbury or potentially truck material to Albany in due course. Um, our maiden mineral resource estimate we came out with a couple of years ago, and we've been doing further work since this, is 70 million tonnes of silica. So one of the uh, interesting things with the silica market is at this stage is most of the customers and a lot of the producers talk around half a million to a million tonne per annum of uh, production or demand. So 70 million tonnes is more than adequate. Uh, you know, you're looking at sort of on, on the numbers simplistically, a 70 year mine life. But of course, in reality, uh, there's the opportunity to kick off the project and then expand it as we move forwards. Um, so let's have a bit closer look. The drilling pattern that you can see where the little white dots are define the resource uh, that I mentioned. So we've been drilling that on a multiple campaigns over the last couple of years. And then there's further drilling where we're doing some exploration and so on. Uh, a summary of our uh, resource is uh, presented there. Uh, and basically, we're looking for silica sand where the raw grades might be around 96, 98% silica, 
but because of the nature of the silica, it's very easy to separate the iron and the impurities and upgrade it to 99.5%, which is sort of what we uh, focus on. So in terms of the projects, I think from an environmental point of view, we're in great shape with our ESG. Um, that's literally the resource area at Sparkler that we're talking about. It's very low value farmland. And it's low value farmland because basically it's full of silica sand and very, few, very little clay and very little nutrients. So from a, a use, land use point of view, farming's pretty minimal. It's tough country from a farming point of view. Uh, but from a potential mining point of view, it's perfect from our perspective uh, because of its location and the environmental impact that we will have. In fact, as we remove the silica sand moving forwards and rehabilitate uh, the land, uh, we actually see that the quality of the soil will improve as a result of our activity. And that's a common thing, certainly in the mineral sands industry in Australia, which operates for Rutol and Zircon. So what are we talking about silica sand? Well, there's some pictures, including a, a close up in the bottom right corner or the middle right corner there, um, close up of the silica sand. And you can see uh, what we're looking for under the microscope. We start off raw in the top left corner. You can see some little black dots and bits of, bits of material that shouldn't be there. And when we screen it, size it, uh, run a magnet over it, and uh, also just put it through simple spirals with some water, um, this silica cleans up beautifully. So in this particular case, it cleans up. It actually starts off pretty good at 99 plus percent. And by the time we uh, clean it up, uh, we've got 99.8 percent silica and uh, around 100 ppm iron, which is what we're aiming for for customers. So the other project which we uh, put some news out this morning on, as I mentioned earlier, is up near Wyndham in the far north. Uh, one of the things that we don't really think about, certainly when we're talking about geology and projects, but from a customer point of view, uh, Wyndham is significantly closer, uh, of course, to the Asian markets where most of West Australia's commodities find their way to. Uh, and Wyndham Port is very underutilised and it's part of the Northern Australia sort of landscape uh, where there is funding available for worthwhile or worthy projects and infrastructure. So we think there's a great opportunity uh, for Cabbage where we've been doing our work recently uh, to supply silica sand through the Wyndham Port and of course for that port to then have a relatively short shipping distance and, a, and an attractive haulage uh, at relatively low costs uh, to the north in the Asian markets. Uh, Wyndham itself is actually quite close, or well, this part of Australia is actually very close to Indonesia. Um, so it's a 90 kilometre road haul to uh, the port from the project area. And uh, we think this has got some real advantages. In terms of the work that we've done recently, those little white dots are the traverses where we've done sampling, uh, low impact sampling. And the raw grades that we're getting are in certain areas where we see more of a grey colour or white coloured sand, again, is starting to look very, uh, very attractive, even raw up to 99.4%, which we wouldn't normally expect, um, and 98% in some of these areas, which is a very good starting uh, level. The iron's quite high because we haven't uh, done any gravity separation or magnetic separation, but we'd expect once we do that, um, those iron numbers will drop and the silica levels will rise. In terms of looking at the sand, uh, you sort of see that the highlight there, uh, the top left is, I call it the ugly, uh, very technical. Uh, the ugly is where you can see a lot of iron staining. It's that orangey colour. So we don't have high expectations for that orange patch of sand. However, the other areas where you see the 99.2% silica highlighted in that grey area, for example, and there's other areas of grey uh, coloured sand, it's literally sitting there at surface. Uh, we think that there's a real opportunity to produce very high quality, high purity silica that meets the demand of uh, a number of customers which we're talking to. Um, helicopter access there just uh, for the work that we did last year. Uh, but it's only about four kilometres from Highway 1, so from a logistics point of view, even though it's a very remote part of Australia, logistically it's actually quite attractive. So that's encouraged us to do this work. Uh, that we've mentioned today. So it's a very short story and it's very simple, um, but it's basically we're focused on our opportunities on obviously exporting products into the Asian markets, which stretch of course uh, from China around to India. Um, our multiple project locations, and we're seeing and focusing on the areas where we see high grades and relatively easy low cost mineral separation and of course mining at surface, uh, very low cost of course. There's no drill and blast. This is just free dig sand. 
pretty much direct shipping ore. Um, so for a small company, uh, it presents you know, some pretty compelling business opportunities for us. We see the silica market in very positive light, especially the high purity silica. Uh, traditionally, silica, glass, that's what it's made of. Uh, but of course, moving forward to the big growth, and I think Bruce will be presenting shortly, and I'll be interested to hear his comments, but I'm sure uh, Bruce is also seeing with his company a lot of interest in high purity silica, and especially for the solar panel industry, because solar panels demand very low iron, or around 100 ppm iron, and from a silica point of view, that really does cut a lot of, let's say, general low quality sand out of the equation, and hence our focus on high purity, our projects and ports. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention and thanks for being here today.